I've just been having a play with my Newman motor, which isn't a Newman motor just yet. Really what it is, is five kilos of wire wrapped around a square spool. And as you can see, the advancements I've made since yesterday is uh, managing to bolt it down. Um, it looks pretty rough, and indeed it is. But it's actually absolutely lovely in its motion. Very smooth, very square, and it will do the job nicely. Um, so far I've only managed to put 50 volts across it, straight from my power supply. It creates a little bit of torque, not very much. Um, 50 volts comes in at about 50 milliamps. And forgive the tedium, uh, it, it doesn't rip the shaft out of my hand. It, it's actually pretty tame. Um, but what I did notice at 50 volts uh, and 1.4 k ohms is that if I hold the shaft and then touch the power on and let the magnets find their home position during that period when I hold the shaft and let it rotate at its own pace the current drops considerably if I put the power straight across the coil 50 volts is 50 milliamps but, but if I rotate the coil if I rotate the magnet then the magnet also induces a current which assists the input power um, and that has a phenomenal effect if I just let it do its own thing 50 volts with 50 milliamps but if I put a bit of torque on the shaft if I just hold it still gently with my hand that 50 milliamps drops to 3 milliamps just by holding the shaft um, and that's somewhat more interesting um, I have a suspicion that might well be something to do with what this is supposed to do in principle um, and I did of course just noticed this by accident um, just a few minutes ago um, and there's been a few things like that uh, more than you would expect from most projects like camera hands getting into the car. so one of the other things I noticed is that two wires going straight into my coil were touching were just by luck touching each other between another tool um, and that had a very profound effect the wires just touching each other um, because what that did was basically prevent the rotation of the magnet um, as you can see I can spin the magnet but, and it's quite difficult to do because the wires are shorted it has an incredible breaking effect on there uh, it's and I've not noticed that before as well. It's amazing. Once I set it in motion, it just continues in motion. It's just from the magnetic field in the coil. It generates its own power in the magnetic field, and then it holds the power in there because of the very low resistance of this wire, and the shaft just keeps spinning. It is absolutely incredible, the effect of having so much copper on there. And I hadn't even noticed that one. But yeah, the reason for <coughs> picking up the camera right now and making this video was to show you this other effect of how effectively it breaks and then continues moving, which is just remarkable. And the other effect I intended on showing was basically a manifestation of the same thing, but with pretty startling effects. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you this other experiment that I just discovered. I'm going to spin up the motor and show you how quickly it stops when I short it out. Um, and this gave me a bit of a, a wooey moment. Um, in fact, it was such an occasion I decided to create a wooey, um, which I've never heard before in my life, and I don't put my name on it. Uh, I think it came from subliminal advertising from Siri while I was asleep. Um, that's what I'm blaming for a wooey. Um, but okay, enough about that. Let me spin this up before I have to cut the camera tape for the first time in my life and short it out. It's
stops on a dime. Just amazing. Just amazing. All right. I got more than I bargained for out of today. But what I'm about to do is set up some transistors and get this thing spinning to um, to go woo-wee again. Peace and love.